The movie begins with a voice narrating about a mythical shark off the Baja coast, Mexico. The legend addresses this creature as the black demon that appears only when it's summoned. The scene then cuts to an oil rig platform owned by Nixon Oil Company, located in the middle of the sea. Two workers are on a boat near the rig, preparing to carry out some instructed tasks. One of them, named Nacho, dives into the water and places a bomb on the site. As he attempts to swim back to the boat, he is suddenly attacked and devoured by a mysterious creature. His partner on the boat feels the tremors and tries to contact Nacho. When he doesn't receive any response, he turns on the lights on the boat to help Nacho find his way up. However, in doing so, he signs his own death sentence as the creature tracks him down and eats him alive. He didn't taste as good as Nacho, though. In the next scene, we are introduced to a Nixon Oil Company inspector, Paul Sturgis, who is sent to a small Mexican town to check on El Diamante, an offshore oil rig. He brings his wife, Ines, and their two children, Audrey and Tommy, along for a vacation. Upon arrival, the family finds the town in ruins, and the remaining locals are suspicious and unfriendly. Paul drives to the same hotel where he and his wife stayed for their honeymoon 16 years ago. However, they find that the hotel is closed, so Paul goes to talk to some locals and asks about restaurants nearby. One of the locals, named Ray, suspects that he works for an oil industry because the place isn't a tourist town. Just then, Inez intervenes and talks to the man in their native language. Realizing that the woman is Mexican, Ray decides to help them and leads them to a restaurant. On their way, the family spots a shrine that is dedicated to Tlaloc, the Aztec god, which Ray claims to be an altar erected for protection of the residents. He also tells them that there's a creature in the sea, which the natives address as El Demonio. However, the family dismisses it as a mere tale and enters the restaurant. Not long after, Paul receives a call from work asking him to carry out the immediate inspection to see if the rig is worth revitalizing or decommissioning. As a result, Paul leaves, assuring his family that he'll be back before sunset. He then rents a boat and makes his way to the rig. While sailing, he inquires with the sailor about what happened to the city. The latter reveals that the people have abandoned the town due to fear of El Demonio. Upon reaching a distance, the sailor pulls over and asks Paul to proceed the rest of the journey alone, as he seems to be afraid of going near the rig. Back at the restaurant, the family is approached by a drunk local gang member who starts to harass Audrey. In an effort to protect her daughter, Inez smashes a beer bottle over the assailant's head and brandishes the shard as a threat before escaping with her children. The trio tries to get in their car, but learns that the gang has punctured the tires. Left with no choice, Inez takes her children to the seashore and pays a sailor to transport them to the oil rig. Drunk gangsters or sea demons? I'd have picked the other side. Meanwhile, Paul arrives at the rig to find it in a state of disrepair, marked by hazards and surrounded by an oil spill. He also finds some diving equipment stained with blood. Despite this, he is unfazed and goes ahead to finish his work. Once there, he begins to call for his colleague, but no one answers. As he enters a room, he is cornered by two men, Chato and Junior. Before they can attack him, Paul explains that he's the inspector sent by Nixon Oil. As a result, the two men lower their weapons and reveal that they're the only surviving crew members. With the rest having been killed. Puzzled, Paul attempts to inquire further, but their conversation is suddenly interrupted by the sound of an approaching boat. It is none other than his own family. As the boat nears, Chato and Junior begin to panic and fire flares in order to distract the so-called El Demonio. At the same time, Paul notices his boat sinking and doesn't understand what's going on. Eventually, his family makes it safely to the rig. While getting off the boat, Audrey accidentally falls into the water, and during this time, she witnesses several human limbs floating. After being rescued, the girl tells her father about what she just saw, but he dismisses her, saying she must have been confused because of the spreading oil. In the meantime, the sailor sails away at high speed, unaware of the imminent danger. At the same time, Paul and Inez demand answers to what's happening, so Chato hands them binoculars to watch the returning sailor. To their horror, they witness a giant 70-ton megalodon devouring the entire entire boat. This turns out to be the same creature that the locals address as the Black Demon and El Demonio in Spanish. In the aftermath, Inez is so overwhelmed with guilt for the sailor because she was the one who convinced him to bring them to the rig. However, Paul consoles her, saying,
saying it wasn't her fault, even though it was. Later, while discussing the creature, Chateau reveals to Paul that the calls made to Nixon Oil for help were ignored, and now the radio on the rig doesn't function due to the numerous attacks on the facility. Upon learning that there's no electricity here, Paul comes up with a plan to dive into the water, repair the electric cables, and subsequently fix the communication system. While preparing to execute their plan, Chateau reveals a theory regarding the Black Demon. He says that Tlaloc, the god of rain, sent this black demon to punish humanity for depleting natural resources. Additionally, he claims that this demonic creature makes people see things and plays with their minds. Paul doesn't believe this story at all, and even yells at him for filling his children's heads with these superstitions. Paul is even more in denial than Kevin Spacey. Following this, Chateau and Junior head into the water in a diving capsule, while Paul watches them through a handheld device. As they reach a certain depth, the two dive into the ocean to investigate the power supply issue. Soon after, they discover the time bomb that Nacho attached to a leg of the rig, which makes them realize that the rig will explode in the next few hours. During their exploration, Chato experiences a sudden vision of human body parts floating around him, realizing that the black demon is near. He hastily swims back into the capsule. Junior attempts to follow suit, but the Megalodon grabs the capsule and starts pulling it downward. Seeing this, Paul somehow manages to pull the capsule up, but only Chateau manages to return back alive. Moments later, Junior's body floats in the water. His legs have been gruesomely devoured. He has become a Junior Junior. Audrey witnesses this from the window, which freaks her out. However, she tries to remain calm in front of her little brother. After losing a member of his group, Paul realizes the gravity of the situation. Seeing Inez crying, he tries to console her, assuring that he'll do anything to save his family from that demon. Paul then goes to Chato and expresses his apology for his loss. While they are talking, he notices some ships, so he quickly grabs a flare gun and fires it to catch their attention. But before he wastes the second shot, Chato seizes the gun from his hand and claims that there is no ship. He reminds him that El Demonio makes them see things and messes with their minds. Hell, not ten minutes ago, he thought Paul was fucking Elmo. However, Paul dismisses the existence of Tlaloc as a mere superstition. This infuriates Chato, who then punches him in the face. Before they can get into a brawl, though, Inez steps in and separates them. Later on, Paul comes up with a new idea to regenerate the electricity. For this, he goes looking for waterways to reroute the cooling system. Despite their earlier disagreement, Chato tries to be friendly with Paul and joins him for assistance. Meanwhile, Inez begins scavenging the rig in hopes of finding something useful. During this, she discovers several safety reports that reveal numerous ignored warnings. She further finds out that Paul signed the documents, approving the rig's revitalization, despite being aware of these dangerous conditions. At the same time, Tommy goes to the edge of the rig to play, when the black demon suddenly launches its attack. This causes the little boy to fall into the water, and he lets out a loud scream. Oh my! Oh! Oh! Hearing this, Inez rushes to jump into the water, while Paul also dives to distract the creature. Soon after, Audrey throws a life buoy to pull her mother and brother in. When Paul realizes that his family is safe, he swims back to the platform, barely managing to escape the Megalodon's attack. In the aftermath of this incident, Inez confronts her husband about her findings. Now that he's caught in his wrongdoing, he admits his mistakes and adds that he did what he did to provide financial support for his family. He also states that his job and economic security would be at risk if he did not act according to the company's interests. Inez can't hide her disappointment and blames him for all the deaths. As a result, she calls him a monster who risked everyone's lives for his personal gain. Hearing this, Paul regrets everything he did, but it's too late to make things right as the bomb explodes in less than an hour. Burdened by guilt, he later confesses to Chateau about everything he has done in the past. It was his first year working at Nixon Oil when he came across the company's first irregularity. After surveying the facility, Paul submitted his report, including all the dangers and deficiencies he had found. However, his executives instructed him to overlook the problems and make a false report. When he hesitated, the company threatened to fire him and hire another worker to do his job. Since Inez was pregnant at that time, he couldn't afford losing his job, so he reluctantly manipulated his report. Ever since, he has been forced to work in Nixon Oil's self-interest, while the local community suffered due to the company 
company's negligence and greed. Seeing the bomb, Paul now realizes that Nixon Oil had been intending to blow him up along with the entire rig because they fear that their practices will be exposed and that they might be blamed for the oil spill. Determined not to allow his family to suffer for the mistakes he committed, Paul devises a plan to get them out. He decides to dive into the water and take the bomb away while also luring the shark. In this way, they can buy them enough time to flee the scene. Meanwhile, Tommy and Audrey are seen constructing a makeshift dinghy with life jackets to facilitate their escape. Paul shares his decision with his wife and also offers a sincere apology for the grave mistake that he made. Upon learning about the risk involved in this plan, Ines gets worried for her husband, but he says that he must take this step to rectify his mistakes. He didn't feel guilty until she got mad at him, but now he's really guilty. After this, he makes Chato promise that he'll take his family to safety. Paul then dons his suit and dives into the ocean, while Chato takes all of them to the dinghy. Paul soon comes across the bomb and notices that only five minutes are left before detonation. At this point, he realizes that he won't be able to escape before the explosion. So, he wraps the bomb around his body and decides to sacrifice himself to kill the creature. In the last few minutes, Paul hides in a structure of the rig and contacts his family through his radio. He apologizes to his wife one last time, encourages his children to stay strong, and wishes them luck in their future. Paul also apologizes to Chato for the harm he caused to his townspeople. In addition, he tells him that he has left some documents in his bag so that he can hold Nixon Oil accountable, even though that'll probably bankrupt his family or something. After bidding his final goodbyes to everyone, Paul swims out and lets the Megalodon devour him. Moments later, the bomb detonates, ultimately killing the Black Demon and causing the rig to collapse. The family, witnessing the explosion from a distance, is devastated, but Inya still tries to stay strong in front of her children. As they sail away, they are eventually rescued by a fishing boat. The movie ends as a rainstorm begins, symbolizing the potential forgiveness of mankind by the god of rain. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.